So for this project, I started with the 49 by 23 and a half window that I had picked up at a local shop called Scavengers. One of the things that they sell are old windows. And um, the majority of their windows they sell for $25 each. And I thought this was a pretty neat window and I thought I could do something nice with it. So the back of it I decided um, I was going to leave as is because it's going to be up against the wall. And I just went ahead and cleaned it up and decided that these windows were in there really uh, well, that I didn't really need to seal it with the silicone, but I did put some painter's tape around the inside of the perimeter of the back of the window just as a extra precaution. And then I went ahead and put painter's tape on the front because I'm gonna have to paint it. You can see there's some areas that we had to fill some holes in and sand down and I'm gonna have to um, paint over that and there's no way I can match this paint with the original paint so I'm going to have to paint the whole thing and also the wood on the top the bottom and both sides is raw wood so I'm going to paint that as well and the paint that I'm using is called wise owl chalk synthesis paint and the color is antique villa after the paint was dry I did take it outside in the garage and sanded it down a little bit to give it more of a distressed look because I do like the distressed look so for the next part of my project, I went up to Hobby Lobby and got some pieces of stained glass. They sell it up there anywhere from $8 to $12 a piece, which is a decent price. And honestly, I've never seen it go on sale. So um, I am not an expert stained glass person, so I don't know what you're going to learn from me as far as this goes. But I, did, um, I do have this cutting tool that I use to cut the stained glass and i um, using it to make stems and leaves and there's two different types of cutters the straight one and the pistol grip and actually the pistol grip is better if you have any type of arthritis in your hands so you'll see me going back and forth using using both of them and um, so these are going to be the stems and um, i do plan on putting these through my tumbler to smooth out the edges. Stained glass can be very sharp when you cut it. You really have to be careful. And um, I think it looks uh, better when it's smoothed out on the edges. And a lot of people who do stained glass work, they actually um, file it down or sand down the edges. And gosh, to do all these pieces, it would take forever. To me, it's just easier to throw it in a tumbler and tumble it and it'll smooth it out in a couple of days and then next i'm cutting up some more green leaves i don't know what i was thinking about these maybe for tulips i don't know we'll see what we end up using them for so that's my 40 pound mjr tumbler that i'm using here and i have to put water in it to cover the glass and then you put the grid in and you have to seal it up tight and I do have a review on this tumbler and it is just such a mess you have to put this lithium grease you have to spray it every single day that it's running and um, I mean it's wonderful because it holds so much stuff but um, <laughs> if you don't use the spray and spray it every single day it voids the warranty I think it's called lithium blaster or something like that, the spray. And there it goes. And it makes a lot of noise, so we have to keep it out in the garage. And like I said, I do have a review on it on uh, my channel. So this actually tumbled for four days, and then I dumped them out and rinsed them out, and the edges were real smooth. And I did put... Um, kind of overloaded it instead of just having the long ones I put some other leaves that I had made up for future projects and quite a few of them broke I was kind of surprised because last time that I did it with just the long ones and there wasn't too many in there none of them broke so my advice to you would be if you're going to uh, put stained glass in a tumbler it would be in your best interest to um, not overload it and just do all the long ones together and don't put other ones in with it. So then I took the painter's tape off of the front because of course I was done painting, but you'll still see the blue tape on the back. And remember I put that there just as an extra precaution for when I pour the resin um, just in case there's some spots on the window that aren't real tight, it would catch any leaks. So that's why you still see the blue. I give it a quick clean up and then I start going through my stems and laying them out on the glass. I'm just doing one section at a time with this. 
I was a little unsure how to create the flower for the iris, but I knew what color blue I wanted to use. So I got out my blue glass that I thought would look good, and then I decided I better search blue iris on the internet and see exactly what I needed and how to create it. So I didn't have any yellow to do the yellow parts of the iris. So what I did was I took the Krylon stained glass spray paint, I believe it's canary yellow, and I sprayed some of my clear glass to make up the little bits that go on the iris. So then I start using the blue glass to create the flowers, set it up the best I can, and use the little bits of yellow that I had spray painted to add to the blue glass. So the glass that I'm using for the flower and for um, anything but the stained glass is all glass that I've prepared myself. It's glass that I found at garage sales and thrift stores that I break up and tumble in my tumbler. And for the most part, I just break it and it breaks whatever way it breaks. Um, I am starting to do some experimenting with um, trying to cut it in certain ways and then tumble it that way and see how it comes out, you know, in certain shapes. But for the most part, it's just broken up and tumbled for anywhere up to a week. So uh, after that, and I have the flowers together and it looks like I've put a couple buds, iris buds on there too. I take some white stones and I believe these little packs of stones I actually picked up at the Dollar Tree. I put down at the very bottom. So next I decided to put a butterfly at the uh, top of it. And the yellow, of course, is clear tumbled glass that I painted with the canary yellow Krylon sea glass, no, not sea glass, stained glass spray paint. And I do have a uh, kind of some yellow glass, but it's not the bright yellow that I wanted for this. So that's why I chose to paint this. And I ended up adding two more buds. So I have a total of four buds and three flowers. And I believe that section is done. So for the next window, I went ahead and put the stones down first and then started arranging the stems and the leaves for the tulips. And then I started going through all my blue glass. And this is such a beautiful blue color. And again, this is all glass that I've prepared myself. I've gotten it from thrift stores and garage sales, plates and cups and bowls that I've broken up and put through the tumbler for up to a week. This is all glass that has the color all the way through it. You have to be careful what glass you choose when you put it through the tumbler because a lot of glass is just has a sprayed on color and the color comes off when you tumble it. And I actually have a video, one of my first videos that I did that shows you how to choose the glass that you're going to tumble. So here I have my tumbled clear glass and I'm looking for pieces to uh, make some more butterflies, some more yellow butterflies that I'm going to spray with the Krylon stained glass yellow spray paint. And for the yellow, I believe I gave it three coats, and you have to wait about a half an hour in between each, each spraying for it to dry completely. The blue glass that I'm using for the butterfly's body is also glass that I broke up myself. Now, a lot of times when you just smash glass, it breaks up in all different ways. And this particular glass broke up in long shards like that and then I tumbled it and some of them are actually more curved than that and I've also used them to simulate water in a couple other projects that I've done. Now to make the antennae on the butterfly I'm using a black marker but you have to be careful with markers because in the past I used a colored marker to simulate a branch on one of the projects that I did and it turned from green to blue after I put the resin over it. So you might want to test it first with a little bit of resin to make sure it doesn't change the color. So for the next and the final window I decide I'm going to use blue and yellow daisies to go along with the blue and yellow theme of the entire window. And so first I start putting all of the stems down and arranging those. 
and then after that I take the white stones and I sprinkle those down at the bottom and then I start going through all my blue glass trying to find petals for the blue daisies. Now again because I don't have the bright yellow glass for the center of the daisy I take some of my clear glass that I've tumbled and I spray paint it with the Krylon stained glass canary yellow spray paint. Next I start laying out the daisies one at a time and putting the little yellow center in and then I put some butterflies at the very top using again the blue long um, glass for the body and the yellow spray painted clear glass for the wings. So now I'm ready to start the resin and when I use resin I wear gloves, I use a respirator, I open the window even though I am doing it in the house. It's in your best interest to do it in a well ventilated area to wear gloves and to use a respirator. I'm using the brand Art Resin and I know in their videos they don't show anybody wearing a respirator but I do feel like it's in everybody's best interest to do that. This is a one-to-one -one ratio um, resin. You mix it um, one part of the hardener to one part of the resin. You'll notice when you first, before you start mixing, it's clear. Then once you start mixing, it becomes cloudy. And then after three minutes, it becomes clear and it's ready to pour. You're supposed to mix it slowly. The slower you mix it, the less bubbles you'll get. I know it looks like I'm mixing it really fast in this instance, but it's because I have the video sped way up. Also, you're supposed to scrape the bottom and scrape the sides as you're doing it so that it's totally mixed. And if you scrape the bottom and the sides to pour it into the project, then the part that you're pouring in has been totally mixed instead of leaving areas on the sides where it's just the resin or just the hardener. Anyway, now I'm ready to start pouring it on the project and what I usually do is use the spoon and spoon it over the glass first. Some people when they use um, tumbled glass, which is the faux sea glass or if they use sea glass, they like it to be frosted. And if that's the case, then you would lay the resin down first and lay the glass on top of it. I like the glass to be shiny, so I pour the resin over the glass. And that's what I do first. I make sure all the glass is covered, and then I start pouring around the sides uh, and up into the corners. I know all, most all resins, epoxy resins, say they are self-leveling. Don't believe it. <laughs> you have to push it up into the corners and along the sides or else you'll find those spots empty. It does level out a little bit, I mean to some degree, but you really do have to help it move around and especially with the thicker resins. So after you pour the resin, you'll notice that there's bubbles and one of the, there's a couple ways to get rid of the bubbles. You can actually use a toothpick and pop them all, which there's usually tons of them. So uh, you can use a heat gun, which I've used in the past and I've recently uh, purchased this little kitchen torch. And boy, had I known how easy this was to use, I would have bought this a long time ago. And just using that big heat gun with having to plug it in and heat it up and um, having to have the cord there and the cord, the possibility of the cord getting in the resin, this is just so much easier. Now you do have to purchase the butane separate and fill it, but it's a real simple procedure. So this first mixing that I had was um, one cup of resin to one cup of the hardener for a total of two cups and that covered one and a half of these windows. So then I had to go ahead and mix up another um, two cups and that is what covered the other uh, one and a half of the windows. I feel like it <laughs> when I was doing this I changed my gloves around five times but it is um, very messy and I do end up getting a bunch of resin on the actual frame of the window and you'll see at the end what I do to clean that up is I use rubbing alcohol. 
having rubbing alcohol on hand when you're using resin is the best thing. I think some other people might use other solutions, but um, the rubbing alcohol will get it off of the frame. It'll get it off of your hands if you get it on. I've even had it stuck in my hair at one time, thought I would have to cut my hair, and it's gotten it out of my hair. So um, always have rubbing alcohol on hand when you're doing this uh, working with resin. Hi everyone, I hope you guys can see this okay. Oh, this is super, super heavy. Let's put a piece of paper here. Oh, this thing is so heavy. <laughs> Let's try to stand up taller. And oh, this, I just love the way it turned out. And I don't, it's so hard, I think when you look at it like this, it's so hard to really see unless you have something behind it. But um, I think I'm going to put this on a wall. And um, I thought about putting it in a window, but I think I'm going to end up putting it on a wall. But I have this piece of paper so that maybe you can see it better, what it looks like. Oops. Ah. It's not going to cooperate. i got to get behind it. There you go. Yeah, it's so hard to tell. And I had it in a window and uh, took some pictures of it, but because of the glare from the window on that, it was kind of hard to see everything. So I hope you can see this okay. But I really love the way it turned out. I love the blues and yellows. And gosh, this um, uh, Krylon spray paint for this was is so easy, you know, to change colors. And... Um, that heat gun that I have for bubbles, oh my gosh, that is amazing. Now, if the glass isn't sitting totally flat, you can get some bubbles behind the pieces of glass and there are, you know, that you can't reach with um, the heat gun or with the little flame thing. So I do see a few tiny ones, but it's nothing that's really noticeable. So, um, yeah, I really like this. But you could do, you know, you could get like a, um, a a regular picture frame and take the picture out and just do one of these in the picture frame. You know, any one of them or, or something different, some other kind of a flower. And something like this would even look pretty on canvas with resin or with the um, other techniques that we were using, the liquid nails or the Mod Podge. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I enjoyed working with the sea glass and the stained glass again. And um, let me know if you like it. Hit the like button. That helps the channel. And have a great day.